over the course of my 34 years of doing fishing television, I've fished on just about every major body of water across the entire southeast and southwest, with one exception. On this week's show, we're going to check off one of the few remaining places that I've never been to. Come on with us to northern Arkansas. Catch some big old fish this week. Fox Sports Outdoors is on the air right now. You're watching the only program with weekly fishing reports and real-time outdoor news from the Southwest region. This is Fox Sports Outdoors. Well, we've made it. This is our first ever fishing trip to a gorgeous lake set in the Ozark Mountains of Northern Arkansas. Right out there is beautiful Norfolk Lake. It's a deep, clear lake. It's got lots of different species of fish in it. We're gonna be fishing today for some striped bass and hybrid stripers. And it's also got largemouth bass and walleye and crappie and lots of other species in it as well. Got a little guide help today. Tom Reynolds is gonna help us out. So it's gonna be a good time. Hope we catch a few for you in the next half hour. Hope you'll hang with us. While we're out doing this, we're taking you around your local region for your fishing reports for this week from our expert team of insider reporters. So, beautiful Nitro Z20 going to head out onto Norfolk Lake right now. We're doing a little scouting around, see if we can catch a few stripers, hybrids for you on this week's episode. Hang with us right now. We get everything started back at the FSN studios for your weekend planner. Great news. The Salooner tables are predicting that some of the best fishing conditions of the month will occur over the weekend. Peak afternoon hours should begin at 2.20 on Saturday and 3.05 on Sunday. And look for the best overnight action to take place starting at 1.57 a.m. and 2.43 a.m. respectively. Expect the sun to rise at 6.38 and set at 8.29. And Friday will feature a full moon, so evenings should be bright. Hang with us for fresh water and coastal information from around the region. Plus, I'll return with this week's Ask the Pro segment. We're coming right back. Fox Sports Outdoors is brought to you by Lou's. Feel the difference. Gene LaRue and Bobby Garland. We know bass and crappie from heads to tails. Gulf Shores and Orange Beach, Alabama. Plan your fishing vacation and catch the details at orangebeach.com slash fishing. And by Glacier Glove. Stay outdoors longer with our gloves, hats, and shades. Look at this. What a gorgeous fish. Welcome. Arkansas. There's one Got a fish. Oh, it's a striper. There we go. Maybe a hybrid. Hybrid. That's a good hybrid right there. Look how fat that dude is. Wow. All right. There's a fat old pig. Look at this. What a gorgeous fish. Welcome to Arkansas. Look at that. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, wow. He's got a mouthful of my swim bait, too. Easy, buddy. I'm going to turn you back. There's a... That's a great fish. Look how fat that dude is. Man. Well, we got us one, everybody. That's what I came all the way up here to Norfolk, Arkansas to do. It's catch me a big old fat hybrid striper. I heard they grew them big in here, but... Man, that's a great start. All right, let's go right here and we're just going to release that fish back. All right, that is just some kind of gorgeous. We made it out, never seen the lake, never been here. Beautiful bluff banks, high mountains, Ozark Mountains around us. For the most part, the lake is clear. And uh, according to Tom Reynolds, who's helping us guide today, he said that you really want to go more for the off colored water. Normally, I would be uh, going straight to the clearest water I can find, but he said the off-colored water is where the fish tend to congregate because they feel a little safer. They're not quite as spooky that way, and so I've got some fairly heavy tackle, 
and I'm slow drifting through here with a lead head and a soft plastic swim bait. And all I'm doing is just uh, watching on my graph and I'm seeing these fish are down. They're not on bottom. They're about 15 feet down and I'm in 33 feet right now. So I'm just kind of letting it go down about 15 feet or so. And then watching my graph and trying to get over some of the schools and I can actually see some of the arches of some of these fish. And uh, just trying to drift over the top of the schools. And hopefully these fish will look up and see it come up and get it and that one did. Wow, how about that? Hi folks, this week's Lone Star Lakes is brought to you once again by the good folks at Fiberworks Marine Collision. I've said it before, bad things happen to good boats. Fiberworks will put you back on the water good as new as quickly as possible. Now this week we're going to go to Northeast Texas and we're going to start at Wright Patman Lake where their crappie are on fire. You'll want to look for brush piles at about 15 to 20 feet of water. A good place to start is the main lake points. You, what you're looking for are brush piles that have been planted by the locals. They're there's a ton of them. Get you two or three of those spotted and then drop down your minnows or your crappie jigs and chartreuse, red, blue, or hot pink for your right patman crappie. Now, also in Northeast Texas, Bob Sandlin, Cypress Springs. Both lakes on fire for bass right now, but it's a deep summer pattern. You'll need to fish in the mouths of the creeks looking for the timber, and you can fish either Carolina rigs or deep diving crankbaits. Keep a lure knocker handy if you're going to fish those crankbaits around the timber, you will lose a few. And don't forget boat docks with lights at night for these East Texas bass. That's this week's Lone Star Lakes brought to you once again by Fiberworks Marine Collision. Be sure and check us out on Facebook, Lone Star Lakes. Hey folks, Captain Greg Berm here with this week's Fox Southwest Outdoors Report. Hey, I talked to Captain Steve Hillman this morning. He was in Lower Galveston Bay chasing slicks and catching quality speckled trout. Captain Steve said he is fishing all three bays, bouncing around in six to 10 foot of water here in Galveston. He's keying in on the slicks. Typical tide change patterns. Steve said you gotta be on top of the fish at the beginning and the tail end of that tide change, you're gonna catch some fish. He also said he's catching some giant redfish in the open water. Captain Steve is using eighth ounce jig heads and soft plastics. His number one go-to right now is a mirror lure soft shad. Over in the east and west Matagorda, Captain Charlie Paradowski, he said the winds they had in June has finally let up and July trout fishing is awesome over there. Captain Charlie said east bay, live shrimp under a popping court, drifting slicks has been the key pattern. Also the folks throwing live croakers are doing real well. Over in west Matagorda, Captain Charlie has been weight fishing and the key bait he is having the best success is a lime truce bass assassin. Also in the mix on his weight fishing trips has been seeing some real quality slot reds. Remember, Amberjack season is going to reopen August 1st. Here in Freeport and Galveston, if you want to book inshore, offshore, nighttime flounder gigging, or want to go catch some Amberjack, mahi, blackfin, tuna, or cobia, and we also have lodging at Bay's Landing. Call the number on your screen and check out our websites. Hey, I'm Captain Greg Varm. I'll see you next time. Hybrid or striper? That's going to be a striper because I can't do anything with it. Got him. Oh, we swim under the boat. Oh, there's another hybrid. Oh, they are bad dudes, boy. Get in that net. All right. <laughs> we are having some fun now, ladies and gentlemen. <clears throat> I came up here and got into a bunch of big old hybrids. There's another good one. Welcome back everybody to Norfolk Lake in Northern Arkansas, right on the Arkansas, Missouri border. And uh, this lake has got a bunch of hybrid stripers like this. It's got purebred regular stripers that run up to 30 pounds regularly, even bigger. It's got some huge white bass in it. And I'll show you a little bit of that here in just a little bit. It's got great largemouth bass fishing, some spotted bass. It's just got a little bit of everything. Good crappie fishing. And uh, what a great lake, my first visit here. Let me tell you a little bit about this lake, but I'm gonna let this hybrid go back. Appreciate the business. So this lake is uh, 22,000 surface acres. It's got about 550 miles of shoreline, which means it's got arms and bays, creeks everywhere. 
It's fed by the North Fork River, hence the name Norfolk. It's got water more than 200 feet deep in it. Really, this is a diverse fishery. It's a beautiful place. Well worth a trip up here if you want to make a trip up to Norfolk Lake in northern Arkansas, just outside Mountain Home, Arkansas. Wow. Hybrids, baby, big ones. A professional bass angler, Kyle Cordiano from the Tulsa area, is doing what a lot of our pros in the state do in the off season to go crappie fishing. He's taking advantage of all the fine crappie fishing opportunities we have here in Oklahoma. Last weekend, he went to Fort Gibson Lake. Now, he's taking advantage of the opportunity to practice with his electronics. He's targeting brush piles, looking for them in 10 to 18 foot of water, throwing his marker buoy out, and going back and thoroughly fishing those brush piles and having good success doing that. He's using an assortment of Bobby Garland crappie baits like the Baby Shad and the Pile Diver, but he's also upsized to a LaRue Rally Grub trying to catch some bigger slabs out of those brush piles as well. Now once he targets that brush pile, has his marker buoy indicating where it is, he's either making a cast over it, bringing that bait back through it or across the top of it, or he's vertical jigging down in that brush pile specifically. Great colors this time of year because our waters are clearer. The Baby Shad, Blue Ice, and Monkey Milk have been really good. And then, of course, if you have more stain to it, then go with your chartreuse and your black hues. Now, I also talked to Todd Huckabee, who's still catching them really good on Lake Eufaula, but he's going shallower. He's saying he's fishing three to five foot of water, staying above the thermocline and doing really well at Lake Eufaula. Crappie fishing is really good in the state this year. You can catch them, but you can't catch them if you don't go. Fish all over my grab. There he is. He's got it. Got it. Oh, look at that. He's up shallower. Ooh, that's a big one. Is it hybrid or striper? Hybrid or striper? That's going to be a striper. Because I can't do anything with him. Yep. Get in my net, you striper. Yeah. There's your big old striper. I cannot believe how fat the fish are in this lake. Look at that big dude. <laughs> I tell you, this is so much fun. That's a pure striper right there. Lines down his side. And uh, I just want you to look at how fat that fish's belly is. These fish, they eat gizzard shad in this lake. You know, there are two species of shad. There's threadfin shad, which are the little bitty ones, three, four inches long. Then there are the gizzard shad. Those things get up over a pound. And they actually catch them on live bait here, on live gizzard shad. Wow. And that's really not a big one for this lake, but it'll sure work for me right here. Let's put him back. Oh, that's a fat dude right there. All right, away he goes. Just to give you some idea, in case you're not familiar with the different species, there are pure striped bass like that one. They're actually a saltwater fish transplanted into freshwater. They're artificially stocked. Then there's a white bass. Then there's a cross, a hybrid, where they take the female striped bass, spawn her in captivity in a hatchery, fertilize it with the male white bass, and that produces the hybrid striper like you saw us catching earlier. So there are actually all three species of those fish in Norfolk here, and they catch them actually several different ways. We mentioned live baiting on gizzard shad. I'm catching them today just uh, almost dead sticking, just dragging a little soft plastic. I showed it to you a little earlier, this soft plastic jerk bait on a lead head. They catch them on an umbrella rig. I'll show that to you a little bit later. They catch them on jerk baits a lot. And I'll show that to you a little bit later as well. So they actually catch them several different ways in this lake, and uh, it'd be well worth your trip to come up. Fox Sports Outdoors is brought to you by Motor Guide's new wireless and easy to use XI3. XI batteries powering the world forward. Waypoint Marine, the Gulf Coast's leading saltwater boating specialist. And Strike King, designed by the pros, fished by you. What is it? It's a good pull, whatever it is. Oh, 
Holy cow, I can see so many. I want you to look at all these fish on my graph. And I, my bait is drifting right through them right now. Eat it, eat it. Got it. He did eat it. What is it? It's a good pull, whatever it is. Hybrid. That's not a big one. That's a little fatty. Well, this has really been an incredible day catching these hybrids and stripers. A lot of fun. I mentioned earlier that this lake's also got a bunch of huge white bass in it. Now, I live in Texas and Really, we don't have a lot of what I would consider to be giant white bass, and a legitimate two-pound white bass is a big one no matter where you are. I came out here yesterday and was just scouting around, fishing around by myself. I, I had my little play. suction cup camera on here and uh, managed to get into a school of those big white bass. And, uh, and I want to show you a couple of them, but these little dudes are little pigs. They are little toads, fat, but I caught him on a spinning rod, actually kind of light tackle, and it was a blast catching one right after another of these great big white bass. And I guarantee you these are legitimate two pound plus white bass. Hybrid stripers and white bass, all three line-sided fish today. Hey friends, Captain Kevin Bruce here with Foxport, Louisiana Outdoor Report. We're gonna talk to you about Lake Darbonne State Park on the freshwater side this week. I'll tell you what, lots of bass getting caught, after mid-morning, up to the mid-afternoon, early afternoon, they're schooling. I tell you what, half and quarter ounce chrome rattle traps with a black back seems to be the key there. I tell you what, catching lots of fish, even some pretty good two to three pounders in these schoolies. I tell you what, also lots of big brim being brought in. Live crickets fished up shallow around the trees seems to be doing the best there. On the saltwater side, talk to my buddies over at Lake Pontchartrain. I tell you what, lots of trout getting caught along the trestle, live shrimp, Sheep head and drum also being caught pretty good over there. If y'all want to make a trip, you can come down here and see us at Cajun Paradise Lodge and Charters for old Cajun Field. Captain Kevin Broussard saying happy fishing. May God bless and we're going to see you next week. You can always watch our latest episode on the front page of our website at foxsportsoutdoors.com. Catch up on past episodes by clicking the archive button and learn about fishing techniques and new gear at our how-to page. Follow us on Facebook and Twitter for new fishing videos every day. Simply search for Fox Sports Outdoors and click the like button on Facebook and follow button on Twitter. And watch a new episode every week on any device by downloading the free Waypoint TV app on your phone, tablet, computer, or smart TV. Fox Sports Outdoors is brought to you by Nitro Performance Fishing Boats. Champions aren't born, they're made. Mercury Outboards, Go Boldly, and Lowrance, and the new Hook 2, the world's easiest fish finder. Welcome back everyone. Let's get right to your Ask the Pro question for this week. Michael wants to know, what is the best time of year to shoot docks for crappie? For the answer, we asked professional angler Andrew Upshaw. That's a great question about shooting docks. Crappie love to live around the docks. Some of the best months of year to fish for crappie around docks or for shooting docks is from the beginning of summer, once they get off the bed, all the way through the fall into the winter time. Once they hit the winter time, that's when they get a little bit deeper, get on brush and things like that. But those times of the year, from the summer to the fall, you're gonna load the boat by shooting docks. Thanks, Andrew. If you want some help from one of the pros, simply go to foxsportsoutdoors.com and follow the Ask the Pro link to submit a question. Now it's time to find out who wins this week's Big Catch of the Week. Every week here on our show, someone gets their big fish picture on television in the Big Catch of the Week contest. Here's this week's winner. He's Jerry Dillard of Temple, Texas, showing off a 52-pound amberjack he caught off Port O'Connor on the Texas Gulf Coast. If you'd like to be our next winner, just go to our website at foxsportsoutdoors.com, click on the Big Catch of the Week area on the right side of the front page, follow the instructions to submit your photograph, and you could be on television as our next winner. Next up, here's some gear that's important if you'd like to come to Norfolk and catch some of these stripers, hybrids, and whites like we caught on this week's episode. Beginning on the left, that's an umbrella or Alabama rig. That's a Strike King model. 
It's got Jean LaRue rally grubs trailing on it five different ways. Top right is a Strike King KVD jerkbait. That'll work for catching these fish when they're up shallow. Next below that is a half ounce jigging spoon with a treble hook on it. That'll work well. And then we caught the fish today on a one ounce lead jig head with a soft plastic jerk bait, just a fluke type bait threaded onto the back of it. A couple of other pieces of gear that were important. First of all, the most asked question that I get on our website is what are those gloves you're wearing? The answer, they are glacier gloves. They're very important in the summer for sun protection really all year round. But they also protect you from wind and water and today from fish teeth. Those hybrids and stripers will rip your hands to shreds, especially those big ones like that. And these glacier gloves do a great job of protecting my hands from all those cuts and abrasions. This particular model is Isla Mirada. It's in blue camo. It also comes in gray, and there are several other models to choose from as well. You can see them all at the Glacier Glove website. And then finally, the Lawrence Elite TI 12-inch unit did a great job of showing me these fish. I had to be in places where I could see the fish on my screen in order to catch them. And I'm showing you another quick shot here of what some of those fish look like. But the Elite TI is a feature packed unit at a real cost effective price. You can check it out at your local retailer. Kudos to the McDonald's restaurant chains. They've announced that by the end of 2018, all stores nationwide will be rid of this and this. This one is styrofoam, this one is plastic. Now what's wrong with that, you say? Well, lots of things. Number one, they fill up our landfills. 30% of our landfills nationwide are from these cups. There are 25 million of these cups put into our environment in the U.S. alone every single year. These take 500 years to decompose, and when they break down, they break into microscopic particles that wash into our waterways. They kill fish and wildlife. They are terrible. Join me in a public outcry for all restaurants to get rid of styrofoam and plastic and go to biodegradable paper, save our environment, and especially save our fish. I really got a kick out of catching those big hybrids and those stripers here at Norfolk Lake in northern Arkansas, just outside Mountain Home. Once again, if you'd like to book a trip here, you can contact Tom Reynolds. He'll bring you out here at the contact information you see on your screen. You can catch yourself some of these as well. Hey, I hope you'll join us on Facebook and Twitter for lots of fishing videos and fishing news and information that we don't have time for here on the television show. Search for Fox Sports Outdoors on Facebook or Twitter, like us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter, and you'll be the first to see all of our videos each and every day. We will see you next week right here. Until then, I'm Barry Stokes. Be safe, have fun. Bye-bye, y'all.